What's up, Cal Gang? All right, so we got the stacks problem here. So there's three forces acting on this beam, and it wants us to find three things. So we got to find the resultant force, the angle of the resultant force, and then it wants us to find the distance in the y direction from A at which we can place that resultant force and result in the same magnitude. So let's go ahead and get started on that, right? So finding the resultant forces, right? Let's go ahead and break down each one of these two vectors. If you watch my videos before, you don't like to do this. Oh, I forgot to write the problem name. This is four, three, eight, one, three, nine. Cool. Okay, so let's start with force one, right? So force one, I did not write to be even four. Am I the only one who does that? I say force, and then it's like four, and I write down four instead of force. It's kind of weird. So in a vector, it's just going to go 60x and 0y. That's what that's saying. Now force two, it does the same thing. 80, 0. And then force three, well, this one is a bit different. So this one goes 90, and it's going positive both ways. So it's going to be a positive, but in the x direction, it's got a 3 to 5 ratio. So this 3 to 5 ratio tells us that if we take 90 and multiply it by 3 fifths, we're going to get that distance in the x direction. Now following that, if we take 90 and multiply it by 4 fifths, we'll get its uh, position in the y. So there we go. That's our three things right as vectors. So let's go ahead and find the resultant force. So to find the resultant force, we're going to take the sum of the forces in each direction. So let's start with x, sum of the forces in the x. We're just going to add up all the x's together. So it'll be 60 plus 80 plus 90 times 3 fifths. And then this force to x is 70 or 194. Nice. Let's take some of the forces in the y this time. So 0 plus 0 plus 90 4 fifths. And then that's just going to be 72 pounds. Cool. So now we can rewrite that. Then we have our force result vector. It's just going to be 194 i plus 72 j uh, newtons, or pounds, excuse me. I hate that we use pounds, but it's cool. Nice. So that's useful. So let's go ahead and find the magnitude of this resultant vector. So of course, magnitude of the force resultant is just going to be the square root of the x and the y. So 194 squared plus 72 squared. And that's going to give you 207 pounds. So that's part A. We can write that over here. Nice. All right, so we did part A. Let's go ahead and do part B. So part B wants us to find the angle. So angle is tangent. So we're going to say tangent of theta is equal to opposite, or opposite or adjacent. So if we're looking at A, our vector is going to point uh, this much to the x, this much to the y. So opposite. It's going to be y, adjacent is going to be x. So that's going to be 72 over 194 from our resultant vector. So then if we take the theta, this is going to be inverse tangent of this, 72 over 194. And then we're going to get theta. Theta is equal to. Uh, I just realized I made a problem on my air previous video. I was looking at the wrong notes on my page. And I wrote down the wrong theta, so I'm gonna have to probably go back and edit that video. Or maybe put a thing in there to be like, hey, I made a mistake here. Uh, okay, so let's go to part C, right? So part C is the fun part. Now it wants us to find where we can place that. So the prerequisite to that, we're gonna need to find the moment around A. So let's find the moment around A. So moment of A, we're gonna take force in the x direction times distance in the y direction, and then add that to force in the y direction times distance in the x direction. So let's just start with force one, right? So let's start with force in the x direction. For that is 60. And then distance in the y direction is five feet. But then we have to consider which way is this gonna rotate. So it's pushing this way, and that's gonna make us wanna rotate clockwise. So if we rotate clockwise, we have to subtract it. So this is actually gonna be a negative. So then let's look at force two. So uh, force two is 80. And then its distance in the y is 7 feet, 2 plus 5. But then this one is also going to be negative, right? This force is pushing this way, which is going to make us want to go clockwise around A, which means we're going to subtract. Cool. So then let's go ahead and look at our third one. So let's start with uh, 
force in x. So let's consider we have 90 times 3 fifths is force in the x. So distance in the y now is 7 feet. So let's look at the force in the x, right? If we're pulling this way from here around a, it's going to make this one go clockwise. So from there, we're going to have to subtract this one. So then let's do force in the y. So 90, 4 fifths is what we find to be force in the y direction. And its distance in the x is 5 feet over. It goes 5 feet in the x direction. So then we're going to multiply that by 5. So let's consider if we pull just vertically here, it's going to make us want to go around that way. So this is going to be added, actually, because it makes us go counterclockwise. So this is our equation. So then we're going to get ma. You can just plug this in your calculator. It is negative 878 pound feet. Nice, right? Cool. So let's not down here. We're not done with this problem. We're trying to find distance, right? So what we're trying to find is how far up could we put this resultant force that we found to make it this exact same thing. So let's find that. Right, so I said MA is equal to force x distance y plus force y distance x. But it wants us to place it across this beam from A to B, which means there's going to be no distance to the x moved. So we're going to have to say that distance to the x is 0, and it's going to be simplified to this equation. So we have the force x of our distance, or of our, um, of our like, resultant force, right? So our first result is we're trying to apply, so we're trying to find distance x. So we can say distance y, or distance in the y is what we're trying to find. So if we divide by force in the x, we're going to get ma over force in the x. So we know both of these numbers. So distance in the y is moment around a is what we just found, negative 8, 7, 8. And force of x is what we just found here. Um, oh, we have to make sure that we do a negative here, too. I forgot about that. Uh, and then this is going to be 100. 94. This is just going to give us the distance 4.33 feet, which is our answer, right? That means if we place something 4.33 feet up with this resultant force, it's going to have the exact same effect of these three forces acting. So that's how you simplify the system. If you need any more help with these problems, I have a lot more on my channel, so feel free to check those out. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. So peace.